Hey, it's Nathan with Crazy Eye Marketing. In this video, we're gonna discuss installing the Facebook Pixel and Standard Events on Kartra. Now, if you don't know what the Facebook Pixel is or what Standard Events are, I have another video that I'll link to maybe on this video or down below this video. Uh, go watch that first because I'll walk through what the Pixel is, what Standard Events are, and where to find the stuff. And so, yeah, once you know that, you can come back here and we're gonna figure out how to install the Pixel on Kartra. And with that, we're just gonna hop straight into it. So this is the funnel that I've designed on Kartra here. Uh, it's got a squeeze page, so capture contact information, a welcome and pre-sell page, a sales and order form page, we got an OTO, we got downsell for that OTO, so if they say no to it, they'll see the downsell option. We got two OTO2s, depending on what they buy on OTO number one, so we got a couple, uh, I think dynamic upsells, I think that's what it's called, dynamic OTOs going on here. So pretty cool feature that's unique to Kartra. Uh, several other tools don't have this type of option here. Then we got our order success page and then they, we take them to the main series and we don't need to worry about that for this video. So this is what our Kartra funnel looks like. And before we go over into Kartra, I wanna go ahead and kinda like plan out where we're going to install these standard events on our funnel. And uh, so first things first, we got our squeeze page here. And when somebody opts in to the squeeze page, they land on our welcome and pre-sale page. And when they land on our welcome and pre-sale page, well, the only way they're gonna get there is by opting in. So we can consider these people a lead. So this would be a lead conversion event or lead uh, standard event. So that's what I wanna go ahead and have trigger when people land on this page so we can track those leads. The next page is our sales and order form page. We got like a one page order form sales page combination going on. And uh, so when people land on this page, I do want to send a standard event to Facebook. I want people, I want to trigger the view content event. And the view content event's kind of unique in that it's not based off of like an action necessarily. It's not somebody becoming a lead or buying something. So they're not becoming a customer or adding a product to their cart or registering for a webinar or something like that. But instead, what this essentially means is that this is an important piece of content, a important piece of information, and you wanna track people that are landing on this page. So I typically put view content events on sales page sales pages or products pages or any sort of page that's like important. And if people are viewing that page, I want Facebook to know that, hey, this is an important page, watch these people. That's kind of what the view content event is used for. And so if they're viewing my sales and order form page, well, that's important. So I'm gonna throw my view content pixel on here or my view content event. All right, so the next page we got going on in the funnel is OTO one and the only way they're going to get to this OTO one page is if they buy whatever's on this front page here so what we could go ahead and do is add a purchase standard event purchase if i could spell it purchase standard event on our OTO one page so only again people land on this page are here because they bought whatever we're selling on our sales and order form page and so we want to let facebook know hey this person's a purchaser, a buyer, a customer, and so we wanna track that. And now we get into some kind of unique situations here. Uh, kind of like, if somebody lands on this downsell page here, that it's because they said no to OTO number one. So we probably don't wanna put a purchase event pixel on our downsell page, right? Because the only way they get to the downsell page is if they said no to OTO1, so no no pixel here on this page. However, on our OTO2 pages, people get here if they buy our OTO1. So in this case, we could go ahead and throw purchase events on our OTO2 pages, OTO2A and OTO2B. So we could have these unique purchase events here because Again, the only way they're getting to these pages is if they buy something. And then we have our order success page. And people can get to our order success page a number of ways. They could buy OTO2 or OTO, well, OTO2A or OTO2B and land on an order success page. So that could be a purchase, right? But they could also say no on OTO2A or OTO2B and land on an order success page. So that would be 
no no conversion event no standard event down sell also they could buy the down sell which would trigger a purchase event or could or they could say no to the down sell and they'll still wind up on this order success page so in this particular case we're not going to track our purchase events on the order success page because we don't know if they said yes or no to buying something however if you wanted to get really fancy and sophisticated and track purchases all the way through your funnels what you could do is have several order success pages so you'd have one like we'd have an order success that's like no purchase so if they say no purchase to OTO 2A, OTO 2B, and down sell, if I can get it to click over here, ignore all the lines and stuff, you'll, you'll understand the concept. And then we could also have a order success page for, let's say, order success OTO 2A. So if they buy OTO 2A, which you know could be ten dollars or something along those lines, so it's a different value. So we'd have our purchase event here because yes, they bought it. Wind up up here, trigger the purchase event. We could have one then also for OTO 2B if they purchase it. Plop it down here. And we could also have an order success page if they successfully purchase our downsell. So now we're getting a little crazy with how many order success pages we have, but in doing this, we could keep track of exactly what people are buying as they're going through the funnel. So that's one option. We're not gonna set that up in here. I only have one order success page, so we're just gonna end it there. But in practical purposes or technically, you could have you know four different order success pages with different purchase pixels. Oh, this one should have one too. You're right. No, you're not talking to me. Or maybe you are talking to me, but I can't hear you. Uh, so yeah, this should have a purchase event too. So we'd have four pages with different values for purchase values and then we'd have uh, no no purchase pixel on this one because they said no right hopefully that's making some sense I know I went kind of a long way around it but anyway let's get to the technical installation of the pixel on our Kartra funnel so let's go over into Facebook Ads Manager first and pop open our pixel and I want to go to setup here and I want to manually install the code myself now to grab my code and we'll come into Kartra now and I got my demo funnel and I want to go to my squeeze page first so I'll edit my squeeze page so we're editing this page of the funnel first let me go ahead and wipe out all the funky order success pages I have going on Let's see there we go I think that's right all right, so here's our page. And then to install the pixel, we're gonna to go to settings here, and we're gonna to go to tracking code. And what you technically should be doing is installing the Facebook pixel in the head area of your Kartra pages. However, for some reason, this does not work currently. I don't know why, and hopefully Kartra will fix it down the road. There's some, some bug for some reason. So anyway, for the time being, as of June 28th, 2018, You'll want to go ahead and add the Facebook pixel code right here in the body area. So we'll just paste that code right in there. And it looks just like this right here. Go ahead, hit apply. And go ahead and publish live. And close. And return to dashboard and exit. And now let's go to the next page of our funnel, which is the welcome and pre-sell page. Let's just pop this down here. Welcome and pre-sell, edit, edit. And wait for it to load. All right, settings, tracking code. And we wanna go ahead and paste in our pixel code right here. 
And now, remember this page has a standard event of lead on it. So whenever somebody lands on this page, we want Facebook to realize or recognize those people as leads. So let's go over here and let's continue to step two of our pixel installation process. And let me actually open up a notepad document and I'll paste the pixel, Facebook pixel right there so I have it handy. And I wanna go ahead and grab the lead snippet so you generate lead and you see this little snippet right here that's what we want that's like the standard event and now what we want to do basically is take our facebook pixel so we got our pixel code right here and then right underneath of it we want to go ahead and add in our standard event and we want to copy that whole uh collection of code that's what you call the collection of code and let me wipe that out and paste in that whole whole code. So we got our pixel and then we got our standard event at the bottom. Hit apply. Go ahead, hit publish live and close and return to dashboard and exit. All right, next up we got our sales page and order form. Sales page and order form, edit, edit. As that's loading, let me go ahead and grab the standard event for view content. Got it right down here, view content. Here's the little snippet of code. Let me grab my pixel. Let me delete the lead standard event and paste in the view content standard event. Let me copy that whole collection of code. Come into settings here, tracking code, paste it in the body, hit apply. Come back up here, publish live, close, and return to dashboard and exit. And then let's go on to the next page of our funnel, which is OTO number one, edit, edit. And this is gonna be a purchase event. So let me grab the purchase event code And with the purchase event, we can go ahead and add a event parameter. And we could actually do that with the other events as well. You might've noticed it. Uh, we could add event parameters like conversion values and currency if we wanted to, to any events. But typically for a purchase event, you wanna do that because obviously somebody's buying something and you can directly relate what they're buying to how much they're worth. So for this particular case, we'll say that the front end product is $7 and our currency is USD. And so this is our little purchase snippet of code. So we'll copy that. And let me pop back up my pixel. Let me wipe out the view content piece and throw in the purchase piece. And we'll copy that code. Come into settings here on our OTO one page tracking code. Paste it in the body section. Hit apply. Come over here, publish live. Close and return to dashboard and exit. And then we've got OTO one downsell, edit, act and edit. So we don't have any standard events going on on our downsell here, but we still wanna go ahead and apply the pixel code to this page because we do want to track people as they go through every page in our funnel. So we'll go to settings, tracking code, and let me load this back up. And let me just grab my pixel code. Don't need any standard events. Paste it on in there, apply. And publish live. And close. And, re oops, published it live twice, so it's super live. All right, return to dashboard, exit. And then the next page in our funnel is OTO2A. OTO2A, edit, edit. And we're gonna have a purchase standard event buyer on this page, because we know that they bought OTO1, either the monthly plan, well, they bought the monthly plan if they're landing on OTO2A, they bought the annual plan if they're landing on OTO2B. So the monthly plan is just 10 bucks, 
So we'll go into settings, tracking code, and let's go over to our notepad document. Let's delete that space. We want the value to be $10. Let's copy our code, paste it in the body, apply, and then publish live and close and return to dashboard and exit. And we got OTO2B, which is if they buy the annual plan. And this one is $99. $99. So just grab this code, settings, tracking code, paste it in the body, apply, and publish live, and close, and return to dashboard, and exit. All right, so that's our two OTO pages. Now we've got an order success page, and we're just gonna apply the pixel to that page. Order success, edit, edit. Then go grab the pixel code. Settings, tracking code, paste in the pixel in the body area, apply, and publish live, and close, and return to dashboard, and exit. So now we've gone ahead and installed the Facebook pixel across all the pages in our funnel, and we've also added the standard event to these five pages right here. And now what we probably wanna do is go ahead and check to ensure that our pixel is actually working. So in order to do that, I recommend using a tool called Facebook Pixel Helper. It's a Chrome extension and I'll link to it down below this video so you can go ahead and grab it. Uh, but it'll let you know if the Facebook Pixel is installed and if it's working correctly. So let's go over to Kartra real quick and test it out. Uh, let's go ahead and let's pop up our pages that have the uh, standard event on them. So let me pop this page up real quick. All right, so this is our welcome and pre-sale page and according to our model here, we should have the lead pixel on it. So if we click on the Facebook pixel helper, we see that we have the page view event fire and that fires on any page that the pixel's on. So that's good, that's what we wanted. And then you'll also see that there's a green circle with a check mark in there with next to lead. So that means the lead Standard event also successfully fired on this page, which is exactly what we wanted to have happen. So awesome, appears to be working on our welcome and pre-sale page. Let's back out of here real quick. We can check out our sales page in order form, edit. Oh, and all I need to do is grab the link, but wish Kartra was a little faster of giving you links to things instead of having to click all around. It is what it is though. So anyway, let me grab the link here. And pop this in a new window or tab. And so we should have the view content event on this one. Let's go check it out. We got page view, like I said, pops up on any page that has the Facebook pixel installed. And then we also have the view content event. And it looks like it's successfully was triggered. We got the green circle with the white check mark. So we are good to go there. I'll just check one more page for this video. I think you understand the concept of checking things out. Let's check out a purchase event real quick. Get coder link. Grab it. Paste it on in here. And so we should have a purchase event valued at I think $7 right here. So let's check our Facebook pixel helper. So we got our purchase event value seven dollars us dollars and then we got our page view being triggered as well just like normal so everything appears to be working well on the pages i checked obviously before going live you want to check all your pages and everything like that to make sure that you're good to go because you want good information and so that's it for this video i just wanted to show you how to properly install the facebook pixel across kartra and so you can track your conversion events